here's the plan for today. This truck, doing a lot of work to it right now, um, but for this video, the focus of it is gonna be doing a five-speed swap. So, just right off the bat, this is a 1984 Chevy K5 Blazer. It has an SM465 manual transmission in it already, and it's a manual linkage clutch. So, yeah, I've got a five-speed, some earlier version of an NV3500. I got it from a 1989 GMC truck, about 150,000 150, miles on it. We'll see if it works or not once I get it in there, but this is the plan. So let me take you over to the transmission and we'll show you that first. So here's what we're working with. I pretty much got, I think, everything that I should need from the guy. He was parting it out. But here's the transmission. Uh, the throwout bearing is toast, but I believe this should all be the same and match out. Um, this is the pivot ball for the clutch fork. I also have the cross member. I don't know if I'm gonna need that or not, but I've got it if needed. I have the pedal assembly and the bracket that bolts to the firewall, so everything should be there. I've got the slave and clutch set up here, so there's the slave that goes down and pushes on the fork, which is right there, and the little pin for that goes in front of that. I've also got the master area, and there is a pin for that, I believe, that, um, yeah, it's right down here. That guy will hook to the pedal, and then that'll go into the front of that master. Um, I've got the dust cover sitting right there. My uh, NP208 should bolt right up to the back of this circular pattern deal. I have the transmission mount if I need that as well, if I can't use my existing one. Um... It's really most of what I can think of that I picked up from that guy. So that should be everything that's needed. Come on, focus. Butter. All right. And then I might have to modify the pedal in there to use that existing pedal. Otherwise, I'll try to use my pedal that I already have. But otherwise, everything's going to start underneath here is what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna get the transfer case out first is my plan. Now, the problem with this is I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to cut the exhaust and then I'll just weld it back together because this little crossover pipe gets in the way of the transmission. I don't think there's gonna be any way around it, but we'll see. So I think that's just about everything that I should need for the swap. I will let you guys know what I get into as I go into it. So first step is gonna be drive shafts, always on a transmission. It's gonna be front and rear drive shafts need to come out. And they are, I believe, probably what, 10 millimeter. This looks like a 10 millimeter bolt to me. Right there, four of them. And then the front it looks like the same. Right there, and then there's some bolts that bolt up to the front of the transfer case yoke, so. We'll get into that and I'll check back in with you once I have the drive shafts out. Well, transfer case is off. I managed to spill a bunch of gear oil right through the holes of my Crocs. So, that's gonna stink and it feels great. But, so that's out, transfer case is out. I am going to crawl up in the truck and I'm gonna take the shifter, the actual, um, yeah, I think it was shifter off of the top and then I will brace the transmission and I'll probably cut the exhaust and bump that out of the way since these 350s have a crossover pipe and this one's not in a good spot looks like it's custom but I'll do that and then I will start working on the bell housing bolts and supporting the transmission and get rid of the cross member okay all right so um, this is the, end, the earlier version of the NV3500, pulled it out of a 89 GMC. What we're looking for is 10 spline on this shaft, the input shaft, and the output shaft for the transmission. I think it's like 27 or 31, something like that, maybe 32. You can double check online, I found a pretty good write up uh, on like Novak transmission guides. It tells you what the SM465 is, but I counted the shafts and they line up. 
I measured everything on the front here. It sticks out like six and a quarter, six and a half inches from the base of this all the way to the front of this. This is about just over an inch wide. It's like an inch long. This is about two and a quarter and this is about two and a quarter. And the throw out bearings fit from both the SM465 and this one. They're basically almost identical, a little bit different. Um, so that's what you're looking for on the transmission. You need the, the correct spline count and all the distances that measure up there. You need the six bolt circular pattern in the rear here. That's the same thing that'll bolt up for your transfer case for the SM465 as well as the NV3500. Something that I do whenever I'm installing manual transmissions over here, if you look at this, I always, you gotta take the shifter off. The SM465 actually, well, you still would want to tape it up, but the, the top here, wherever your shifter goes into, whenever you take that out, you obviously you can't mount it with that in there. You gotta take it off. And I'm gonna have to cut a hole in the firewall to account for this, because it's further back than the 465. So I always make a cardboard template and then just put the bolts back in and duct tape any holes up so that I don't have sparks and grease and whatever flowing into my transmission. That's a good tip there. And then whenever I'm doing a clutch, uh, the clutch on my truck was actually replaced about 10, 12,000 miles ago with the upgraded heavy duty clutch and throttle bearing when the engine was replaced. So I'm not gonna do any of that. I'm leaving that all how it is. But what I am doing is I gotta replace the throttle bearing because that was shot from the donor deal. And I always, I clean this stuff off real good, make sure the splines are clean. And then this little uh, shaft that goes into your pilot bearing, make sure that's clean. And then I grease everything up. So starting from all the way back here, all the way up to here, the splines, everything. I don't cake it, but I get enough. I get a little bit of grease in there. And then I also grease up this pilot bearing shaft. Now this pivot ball for the for your clutch fork, I'm gonna grease that up as well, both, both points, because this is kind of a high wear point. So I'm gonna make sure I get a lot of grease on that, and I cleaned it off as well. And then um, I'll show you the clutch fork I'm gonna grease that up as well, and then I'll show you how it goes together, because it was kinda, it took me a second to figure it out, because uh, when I got it, it was not put together, so. Mm, okay, there should be fine. So let's, well, I'm gonna grease a little bit up of this. So both of these points I'm gonna grease up. We have the, this is where your little pivot ball rests against probably don't need to double grease them but I don't think it's gonna hurt me so I'm gonna throw it in there while I've got it out and open and I'm also gonna grease the back side this is where my rod from the hydraulic clutch is gonna poke into so I will grease that up as well that should make sure it doesn't start grinding anytime soon now the way this goes together this is from an 89 GMC 1500, so that should apply to this truck as well. But if I'm swapping it, it applies to me. This is your clutch fork, and it's gotta go like this, because this indented portion goes on the, I guess, the male part, like that. And here is the throwout bearing that I'm using. The part number is, hits on the screen. I got this from AutoZone. But the way that it goes together, kind of kind of funny, it took me a second to figure it out, and now I've probably already forgotten. Okay, so you got these metal tabs here, and they're very thin metal, and then this is the strong support piece. So you don't wanna make sure, you don't wanna put it over top like this. Don't put it in between, it almost feels like it goes right there. That's not super secure. You gotta bend these tabs down, and then, and then stick it in there and it kind of clicks into place if you push it all the way in. So you see that, how both tabs are like in between the throw out bearing. And then when you um, throw it on here, it's going to slide out a little bit. I think I'm going to place a tiny bit of grease in there, just on these little metal contact pieces. I don't think you need to do that to be perfectly honest. I don't think that's necessary at all. So I'm gonna slide it back in. Just like 
like that. And then it's gonna pull itself out a little bit when you put it on here, because you've got to line it up with the, gotta line it up with that guy. And then just make sure that it actuates properly by ugh, pushing on the pieces. So that's what you want. The only thing I didn't think about was the brake lights or the reverse lights actually. When you're in reverse, I believe that's what this is. This was the only plug on the transmission for the SM465, but it's just two pin, one of these typical GM connectors. I took the little, there's a green, orange, or ru green, it's a green rubber, like isolator to keep dirt and oil out. And then I pulled it off of that. And then if you look at the NV3500 that I have, I don't know if it's because it's an 89 or, or what, but that little uh, isolator, the squishy guy, fits right in that connector. That's the only connector, same side, um, driver's side, for the transmission. So I'm assuming if I can reach, because the SM's was like right here, but if I can make it reach, I think that is going to actually um, do my reverse lights. So that'll be cool if that works. Okay, so it sits in there. There's the NV3500. There's the NP208. There's the 700R4 K5 Blazer. Probably Suburban, same thing I imagine. Cross member right there. And it all bolted up fine. No issues with that little catalytic converter heat shield. Let me get on something a little sturdier. No issues that I can see of right now with the what is that? Transfer case yoke and um, cross member. That appears, my camera is right in front of the yoke for the front drive shaft. That looks like it's gonna go right in there. I don't think we're gonna have an issue. The exhaust did not fit, so I cut that off. And there's the cutoff pieces up there and up there next to the transmission, the downpipe. I'm gonna get some pipe and I will probably just exhaust clamp it on right now. I'm not gonna weld anything up just yet since uh, I don't know if this transmission is any good. I gotta actually try to drive it for a bit and see if it grinds gears or if it works at all before I can actually weld anything permanently for the exhaust. So otherwise it's gotta come right back out. So I have the speedometer cable just hooked right back up in there. The four wheel drive like light switch on your dash plugs right into the top of the transfer case. No issues there, it's the same transfer case. And like I said earlier, there is the plug in for your reverse for the NV3500. Here's my wiring harness from the SM465. I think they're gonna plug in. I need to unbutton some bolts in the firewall to give myself more length, but I think it's gonna plug right in there, no, no issues, hopefully. So after this, rear drive shaft isn't gonna be an issue, it's the same length. Front drive shaft isn't gonna be an issue either, same length, so I'm not too worried about that. I just have to wrap up the exhaust. I need to cut a hole in the firewall. Oh, so the four wheel drive linkage, that's all hooked back up right there. It went right back into place, because like I said, it didn't go back at all. So um, I didn't have to move anything or adjust that, that guy on the four wheel drive but I gotta make sure that I can fit the shifter in here and cut a hole in the firewall right up there before I put this little, you know, cotter pin in that guy and firm that up. So that's what I'm gonna do next is cut the hole in that and work on the exhaust. Well, no, exhaust will be last. I'm gonna cut the hole in the firewall and then I'm gonna work on the pedal and the hydraulic clutch that should bolt right up over here and I gotta put the dust shield on as well. That's where we're at. All right, so I've got the shifter installed. And as you can tell, well, I've got to shake the camera around a bit more. But as you can tell, I had to cut the, the tunnel here. There's the top of the transmission. That's where the SM465 shot through. And it pretty much wrapped up right around where the top of my shifter is coming through for the NV3500. So I had to chop it down a bit. And I basically, you can see, I cut straight down, cut straight down, and then I cut across. I didn't chop any of the four-wheel drive shifter. 
and I just cut it to there and then cut to there and then I bent it around a bunch until it actually broke right there. So it does go through all the gears right now. Try to hold the light. Uh, you know, there's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then reverse. Doesn't seem to hit anything anywhere. And we're all the way far and to the right and down, so. Seems like it has all gears. We'll find out sooner or later. Now I want to see how the shifter boots line up.